It was deja vu all over again for Westfield football as the Bulldogs again won the 6A Virginia State title by beating Oscar Smith in an overtime thriller. This one in double overtime after 2015's 3 OT affair. Westfield head coach Kyle Simmons joined me and I asked him if he had thought about how crazy it was to win back-to-back -back state championships with both games ending in a style that Hollywood might laugh at. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty surreal. I had almost the identical feeling uh, Saturday uh, as the game felt like it was beginning to slip away. Momentum changed as I did the previous year. It was almost exactly the same feeling. I could not believe we were putting ourselves in this situation again. Um, because there were opportunities where we could have taken a little bit of bigger lead, gotten some cushion, um, and, and, you know, as they say, they got players too. And uh, hats off to Oscar Smith and the way they battled and came back both, uh, both years. So I feel very fortunate to have come out of each of those games with a win. And it's funny, you know, Sean Mitchell, their record-setting quarterback, brings them back, and, you know, they score late. And, you know, seconds to go, then they get the two-point conversion. Uh, how did you go about, and maybe it wasn't you, maybe it was your players, but how did you go about keeping the spirits up on the sidelines when you're that close to having it and then you have to go and say, hey, it's, it's a brand-new ball game? I don't know how much of this is true, but people tell me that, you know, the players feed off the coaches. So, you know, we try to keep um, keep our heads straight, not lose our minds, uh, try not to show panic, um, you know, just try to uh, think through the scenarios and the things that we need to do and, and how can we have success. And, you know, I think the kids feed off of that. I think that, um, you know, that's pretty much the way we operate throughout the whole season, uh, even when we're struggling at times, uh, that we just – you know, just keep trying to get better, just keep trying to work. And I think also where we were as a team at the end of the season, as far as I felt like the players really cared about one another, they were playing for each other, they were bought in, they were doing it for the right reason. And I think that that has a value that you really can't, you know, you can't put an amount on that when you get into these uh, adversity situations that people are, you know, they're okay. They're not, like I said, not losing their heads um and that really, uh, I think, helped us out there at the end of the game. Yeah, it's funny. You know, we, we talked a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago, and you talked about your kicker who, you know, everyone by all, you know, everything, he's – best kicker in the in the state misses a misses an extra point you know before they get the ball back in double ot and obviously his teammates pick him up with a big stop there but just another had a log on the fire of hey here's some adversity let's go ahead and conquer it let's talk about that last play uh, quickly coach uh you know calhoun your nose tackle makes the big stop on white there running back and of course kevin petrillo is right there talk about uh, what you guys uh, if anything was talked about before that play came up well, I thought that, um, you know, after we missed the extra point, you know, I I was a little distraught inside because, you know, I knew all if they scored, all they had to do was kick an extra point. I hated to see the game get lost because of that, especially with uh, Brian having such a strong year and being such a good player. And I also didn't want, you know, that to be weighed on him and, and his family. I knew he would take that hard if we had lost the game due to that. Um, not just due to that, but I know he would have taken that uh, pretty hard. But, um, you know, so Oscar Smith got fourth down. They got a score, and I was a little surprised at their play call. I thought that um, I thought that they might have, you know, given him more of a play-run option. Uh, I also thought it kind of played out a little strange there at the end. Um, they didn't blow the ball in play. And Oscar Smith was kind of over on their sidelines. I don't know what the discussion with the referee was, but it seemed like they've got, you know, a pretty um, long amount of time above and beyond the 25 second clock to get that play in and, and make some decisions. So I'm not sure what played out right there. I was a little confused about that. But, um, you know, when they ran the ball and, and we were stopping the run pretty well most of the game, uh, that really played into our hands. And, you know, you could tell by the players' excitement that it, it wasn't even close. He was truly – he was stopped short. And was there a credit to both Calhoun and Petrillo kind of being there? Again, it's, it's a fourth and three, really. You know, most kids might be thinking it's got to be a pass there. Is that a little bit of smart to them, you know, following their keys and being coached up right? 
Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, you know, we were a good technique team, and, um, you know, I thought it was all Calhoun or Days in there. Um, I've watched the play a couple times. It's hard to see. You know, Kevin scraping to the outside. He comes back in to finish the playoff. Um, You know, I thought that, uh, you know, I don't know if Oscar Smith had some confusion there. It, It didn't seem like the guys up front were blocking the play for for it to be an inside run and that might have been why Kevin kind of began to leak to the outside there a little bit but you know that whole series Oscar Smith seemed a little be a little off their game I know they had a false start they uh they had a pitch that they fumbled um you know they really helped us out by making some mistakes themselves Coach, let's talk big picture on this season. I thought, uh, reading up to do a little research, I believe it was after the uh, after the Robinson game, you guys win a close one there. And you, you looked at your kids, and, and you know, I've coached a younger age than obviously you do now, but it always seems like kids, if you can kind of give them a picture in their mind, it makes it go pretty, the message it gets across a little bit better. And I think at one point you talked to the kids after the game and said, tick tock, tick tock. Season's kind of slipping away unless you guys start playing the way we know you can play. Uh, talk about that speech to your team and kind of where it led them over the last few games of the year. Yeah, that speech was more directed to the offensive players than it was anybody else. I just felt that we were underperforming offensively. I knew we had talent. And I knew we had potential. Uh, our defense was kind of leading the way. Special teams was being was pretty strong. But uh, we really needed to grow up on offense, and that TikTok was just kind of to say to these guys, look, you know, you have this potential, and, and you're not playing up to that, and the clock is ticking. You either get better now and start playing, or our season's going to end before it should. And I even printed up a piece of paper uh, that I give out on Thursdays um, before we go have a team meal with, you know, something inspirational or, or thought-provoking, and I – I uh, had a picture of a clock and the words tick tock, tick tock next to it just to kind of hammer that home that um, there's only so many guaranteed games left. And if you don't, uh, if you don't start playing better, we're going to be turning our gear in. And coach, we talked earlier a little bit and, you know, we made the comparison to last year's team that dealt with the suspensions early in the season, kind of found their footing. This team, maybe not as much adversity, but still managed to kind of get their uh, things going late in the year. Could you talk about uh, how maybe last year's team influenced this year's team? Well, I think that uh, a couple things. One was the drama that we had at the beginning of the season was something that I believe Kevin Petrillo in an um, interview that he had with someone earlier in the season made the comment that, you know, we wanted to have a season with no drama. So I kind of caught on to that and used that a few times at the beginning of the year, just reminding them that how painful that, uh, that time was for us last year and how it would just be nice not to have that drama. And, and as far as I know, all indicators are that we were able to do that this year. Uh, I also think that, like I said, where we were at the end of this season was very similar to last season, maybe for different reasons, but that importance of the team unity and playing for one another and being bought in and caring about the guy next to you, uh, I think was really important for us. Um, like I said, I don't think you can put a value on that. I really am a believer in it, and I felt our team was in a good place as we entered the the playoffs this year. Coach, you end up uh, two straight state championships. I know Westfield has had them before, and obviously it's a big deal. But uh, you move forward, obviously. I don't want to take away the glow this year, but you always have uh, some goals moving forward ahead. And I I guess the question would be this. Considering the conference you guys play in, which it's so rugged every single year, does that help you guys refocus next year as opposed to not thinking, hey, you know, state championships, yada, yada, yada. It's, hey, step-by-step, step, let's get through this rugged conference? Well, I think the entire northern region uh, was uh, tough this year. Um, you know, I thought the Concord was a little down this year, so some of our tougher opponents were outside of our, our district. Um, next year, I know our schedule, we open up with, uh, I don't remember if it's Lake Braddock, then South County, or South County, then Lake Braddock, but, you know, our, we're going to have a tough haul at the beginning of the year out of district. Um, but it does help to play against good teams here in the Northern region. I think that we're well coached. 
Um, I like that, you know, it's not every year uh, the same teams. You get some new guys in there, Madison stepping up, South Lakes having success. Um, I think that's really cool and fun about high school football. Um, you know, I just want to be in the mix at the same time, but I like the competition that we have. I think it makes us uh, all better football coaches and football teams. And, you know, then we match up with somebody else from somewhere else in, in the state. Um, I think we've shown we can have success against them. That was Westfield head coach Kyle Simmons. Here interviews like that one every week during the football season on my show, The Final Drive, which can be found right here on dmvstream.com as DMV Stream is your home for the best high school sports content in the D.C. metro area.